Andrew McCart, IFL TV, in association with MTK Global. I'm delighted. Well, it's Tommy and Ghost back in the back on the scene. Tommy and Ghost, my main man, Austin Amo Williams. Amo. What's up, man? <laughs> First and foremost, chap, how is things your side of the world? Um, it's it's crazy over here. Things are actually opening up a little bit. Like our restaurants and stuff are slowly opening up. I think it's like a 25% capacity uh, that they can operate at. So, you know, things are slowly creeping back to normal. And um, the the world is, is coming back. You can see the reemergence of, of the world. And it's, it's, it's really cool to see. You know what I'm saying? After this big, crazy time, it's, it's crazy to see how we still will bounce back as a, as a human race. You know what I'm saying? It, we're going to come back. We're going to get past pandemics whatever it is and we, we emerge from it it's crazy so that's that's how it is over here we just in that process now of like you know turning back to the normal life i want to say off cap but before i push record i asked how you were and you said that you you're having a good time right now because you're finding yourself as a human being i just want to know like how are you doing that? Like, are you just taking on, like, are you read more books? Are you just taking on some alone time inside your own head? How are you sort of like finding yourself as a human being during this crisis? A lot of meditation, a lot of going within, you know what I'm saying? And kind of letting myself be myself without the influence of anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not the influence of trying to get more people to tune into my fights, not the influence of trying to get more people to watch my Instagram, not the influence of anything like that. Just literally wanting to find myself. You know what I'm saying? And you know, it's a hard time. It's hard to get to that point, especially when you assign fighter, not only assign fighter, but to one of the biggest companies in the world. You know what I mean? Because I've already been exposed to thousands and the masses in Madison Square Garden. You know what I mean? And stuff like that where, where thousands of thousands of people have already seen me. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to go and try to discover yourself when you know that a lot of people already know you for just Emma Williams. You know what I mean? And they and they're interested because of Emma Williams. And they all they know is this fighter kid, you know, who has a fast story of running through the ranks really quickly and stuff like that. But do they really know me? Do I really know me? You know what I'm saying? And I think we always have room to find ourselves more if we just, you know, go with it. And uh, that's what I've been doing right now. I just, with no influence at all, no monetary influence, no popularity influence, anything like that, just trying to figure out who I am. And I've been, I've been on a great ride with that since I got a break. So this is an awesome time for me. Well, that, that's a very, very good way of looking at it, and a great mindset to have. I wish I could have your mindset, Amo, to be honest. You know, it's, 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 it's rough for me. I don't know why I'm finding it so hard, but that just be, I might have to meditate like yourself and I might actually get some tips for you, from you. I just want to go back to an Instagram post that you did post two weeks ago. It was a picture of you in the bag, bags and you looked awkward and stuff like that and you said that people will laugh at you, but sort of like, look at me now four years down the line. I mean, that is some transformation in just four years, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's crazy, man. See, that was almost one of the, that probably sums up one of the biggest realizations that I had, you know, especially of something that I want to admit to the world as far as like, just be yourself, man. Like, people are going to laugh whether you be yourself or you be somebody else. And then later on, you'll see everybody becomes an admirer or somebody who, who did their invested, whether it's on the good side or the bad side, they're invested because they like, where's this going? This dude is doing something different. You know what I mean? Even though he looks like a, a idiot right now, he's doing something different. Where is it going? And you get more people invested, but I just want more people who are on the edge of being themselves or not. Uh, I use that post, I use myself as an example to get more people to go ahead and look stupid for a little bit because, you know, really what is looking stupid? It, it, does it even really exist? It's, it's really what you perceive it. So, you know, if you believe in yourself and you think that you can do something special, you know, you're following your heart, that's what you need to do. And that's what, that's the message I wanted to get across with that, with that post. And I didn't even know that it was going to ring out as much as it did, like, I looked at the insights on that, the people shooting it through direct messages and stuff like that, they, 
you know, they really found that extremely inspirational. So I was like, you know what? This validates that I'm on the right path as far as this whole meditation and finding myself thing because I believe my purpose is a lot bigger than being a boxer. You know what I mean? Boxing is great for me. It's something that I'm going to do and, and enjoy. I love it. I need it. You know what I'm saying? But it's just it's just a it's just a platform for me to to be very inspirational to the masses. So that that's that's something I've been thinking about in this time. Just a small little part, you know. That's that's the thing. When I saw that video, I was like, wow. You know what I mean? What a massive way you've came because you went from that to let's just say it, private jets with Eddie Hearn, one of the biggest. <laughs> you know, I mean, in four years, Amo, that's that's some achievement, brother. Whether you win world titles or become a multi-millionaire through this game, what you've achieved in them four years is something special, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's it's extremely special. Like the story, like I said in my first interview, like even if I wrote this down, like you wouldn't believe it. it it's it's hard to believe, you know what I'm saying? I said that in my very first press conference speech, you know, like if I wrote this down, you wouldn't believe it because it's just so kind of like odd. But it's just the product of being yourself and believing in yourself and how to how the stars align for somebody who who believes and, and loves themselves and, and, and really takes time on themselves and not worry about being like anybody else or not worrying about following the status quo. You really just follow your heart. You open up some crazy doors for yourself that seem impossible. Like four years ago, this dude was looking like this on a heavy bag and now he's on private jets flying around the world. You know what I mean? Like from that, from that stupid little thing he was doing just because he believed it. You know what I mean? So yeah, man, it's it's a, it's amazing to have have these realizations, you know. And and these four years that I have is just fueling me to keep it going, like you know. So I can say eight years from this video, now this is where I'm at. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's where I'm at with that, man. Let's talk some boxing then, because you're five and all four KOs you've been doing everything right in the boxing game you're very you can talk well which is every promoter's dream every fan's dream somebody that can talk and fight in the ring you were due to fight I think it was in was it April or March but then this pandemic March 19th March 19th How, what was in, your uh, in Los Angeles yes that's right yes what was your mindset when that got cancelled and scrapped due to this pandemic I mean what I mean you're a positive person but what was the initial thoughts going through your mind when the event was cancelled when the event was canceled, it was so much to grab. Oh, I'm sorry, that's. Well, I know Prince. Was, I know Prince. Man, he's more famous than what's you. What's up, Prince? <laughs> no, that that was a. Uh, when that happened, I definitely was, you know, thinking it was so much to grasp. I really couldn't like think certain points on it. I was thinking about, you know, getting home. You know, first and foremost, you know, what I'm saying, getting back to my family, getting back to my dogs, getting back to like. Uh, I didn't know how far it was going to go like this pandemic if, if we was going to run out of food and it was going to turn to you know that madness that everybody was thinking so when that actually happened um I wasn't even thinking like economically or thinking about like my my the gains I would get from the fight or the fight being missed or nothing I was more so thinking about coming back home you know what I'm saying and, and being able to take care of my people and take care of myself and um, be safe. You know what I mean? That's that's the initial thoughts I had. And then as time went on, of course, I was thinking like, wow, NBA's canceled, the Olympics canceled. Are we ever going to get back to boxing? You know what I'm saying? And that sucks because that's something that I truly, truly want to do. But I also have faith that, you know, we've seen pandemics before. We've seen viruses go out before. And this is probably the, I don't know, I think it's, is it is it breaking up? Yeah, it's breaking up. I got you now. I got you now. You're back. You're back. Okay. I was just saying that um, I basically just have faith that, you know, it was going to come back to normal. Even though this was the biggest effect. Ec oh, you're going again, bro. I just had the faith that it was going to come back. Belief allowed me to continue to grow myself in a time like that, where they're saying, like, it might all be over, so I'm going to just piss it all off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you don't believe that it's coming back, it'd be no reason to work. It'd be no reason to work on myself. It'd be more so of, like, a, oh, it's over with. Now nah, let me just do whatever I want to do. You know what I'm saying? So I took this time to, to really still grow, because I had the faith. I knew it was going to come right back. 
You know, he, here in the UK, the British Bulldog, I know it's different commissions in the US. You've got Texas Commission, New York, Nevada Commission. But in the UK, we have a British Box and Border Control that controls the whole of the United Kingdom. Now, the, the Secretary, uh, Robert Smith, he said that it's looking like July they're going to put some events on behind closed yes. doors. What are you hearing yeah. stateside? Has any of the commissions came out and said anything about putting on fights stateside? Commissions, I haven't talked to anybody from the commissions, but I did talk to Botcher. Eric Botcher. Mm -hmm. Eric called me and he told me, he said, uh, like, stay in shape, stay ready. July, early July or late June, it's looking like we'll be able to get back. He'll have a lot of information by the end of the week, which was earlier this week. So mm -hmm. he probably has the information now. And he told me to just stay sharp, stay ready, because when we come back, I'm going to be going to work. You know what I'm saying? Um and that's exciting for me. You know how you know you know my philosophy as far as like how I want to fight back to back. Because he was talking to me about finishing the fight um, and and going straight to the Lomachenko card. You remember like it was right. I wanted to go back to back to back. So you already know my philosophy as far as um, fighting back to back. So to get the news that you know when we come back in July, I'm on it, on it, on it, and I'm gonna be able to shoot through the ranks. I think it's like perfectly made for myself. You know what I mean? It's, it's an advantage that I have because it's a certain feeling that I personally get when I can fight back to back to back. And that feeling is like, it turns the fights more so into sparring sessions. And in the sparring sessions, you know, it's less pressure. You have no crowd. You have, you're in the comfort of your own gym and you can be really creative. You're working on stuff. Now, when I get to fight back to back to back to back, the fight ends up turning into like a sparring session field where you'll see me do a bunch of crazy things because I'm comfortable. I'm, I'm even more comfortable. I'm, I've been here just a month ago. I just fought two months ago. I'm, I'm right back. You know, I don't have any ring rust or anything like that. So for me to be able to basically for me, it's just going to be staying healthy and uh, getting through the fights safe, you know, but that's what I heard from Botcher. He just told me, it should be an explosion of work when July comes. Cause I, you know, not only is Matchroom, I think trying to make money back for themselves. I think they care about their fighters and they're trying to make up for the lost checks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's how we get paid. We get paid through the fight. So I know that it's a win-win situation for Matchroom to get their numbers back and for their fighters to be happy and get their livelihoods back uh, normal. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's the information I got on as far as fighting. How do you feel fighting in front of no crowd then behind closed doors? I know you, like, you're, like I said to you, you enjoy it, you embrace the crowd, you, you jump on the ring and stuff like that. So how are you going to feel when fighting in front of basically nobody? I got an experience. You remember when I was in uh, London and I fought, and I fought the very first fight of the night, mm. you know? And it was a ghost town, man. It was crazy because I just came from Newcastle. You remember I was in yeah, Newcastle? Yes, that's right, yeah, And I was in front row in Newcastle. And it's electric, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, like, man, I'm about to get the same thing. And then I figured out I was the first one on the card, the whole card. Like, not the first on the broadcast. No, the first on the card before anybody gets there. And I was like, Man, I seen this beautiful thing that London can be, and this is what I get, you know what I'm saying? But it was funny, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was a funny experience because it was almost like life telling me, like, not yet, you know what I'm saying? You haven't made it. We showing you what it can be, but right now you're a fighter that's going to be, you, this is where you at right now. So keep working hard. Stay focused. Don't let it get to your head, you know what I'm saying? It was a reminder that I needed. Like, Eddie Hearn was showing me what I'm going to be. But... <laughs> Let's start. Let's not skip no steps. Let's feel, let's build this foundation correctly. So I'm saying that to say I fought in front of it was maybe 20, 30 people in that arena. I'm being honest. I was one of and them. You, that's what I'm talking about. That's <laughs> my guy right there. <laughs> no, nah, but it was like 20 or 30 people. You seen when I fought? It was literally like you can watch me. If you were there, you could watch me with no influence like no crowd distracting you from really going on you can really see what i've been working on and everything like that and everybody got to see like the slower approach that i took with him to break him down rather than the previous three fights so that was real good and that helped me out in my career but i'm saying that to say i got the experience of fighting like that and i i, I probably have an advantage over a lot of fighters to be in a stadium fighting with 
about 20 people there. You know, how much can, how many people can the uh, O2 fit? I think it's 20,000. 20,000. So I'm in a place that can fit 20,000 with about 20 or 30 people. So just imagine that, like, the, the crickets and the pin drops that you hear, you know what I'm saying? And uh, for me to have that experience and to get that weird feeling out the way, you know what I mean, of, like, fighting, but no crowds really involved, I already have one up in that realm. I already know how it is to know that you have to be your own entertainer. You got to be your own energy. You can't ask to grab it from the crowd because the crowd can give you a lot of energy. You can't be that. You can't take energy from the lights. You can't take energy from the Megatron anymore. You can't take energy from all of those things. You got to learn how to kind of muster that up yourself. But since I got one experience with it already, I know that I have the advantage now. You know, when we do these studio fights and it's seven, eight people in a crowd, it's not going to make my performance go down because I don't understand, you know, that I'm missing elements that used to give me energy. Now, I'm completely aware that I'm missing elements that normally give me energy. And I got to find a way to make that up for myself. I got to find a way to replace that. However it may be, I haven't brainstormed on it yet. But I just know that in order to perform how I want to perform, I just got to find other ways to fill those gaps. I don't want to just go in there and actually feel like I'm in a sparring session because it will show in a performance. Uh, I got to find a way to keep myself amped up and ramped up as if it's a crowd there. So I, even, I haven't even got to think on that yet, Andrew, to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? But I will come up with a solution for that. Definitely. I want to sort of jump ahead a little bit. I mean, you're doing all the right things. Like I said, you're five and all four KOs. You're doing all, all the right things. How soon can it be until we see you fight a ranked opponent or maybe one of the minor titles, an intercontinental or an international title? When can we see you fight one of them uh, type of fights? Are you ready now? I honestly do think I'm ready now. And I think that it's going to happen faster than projected because of this weird time. I was talking to my dad about this earlier, actually. I told him, say Matchroom gives me fights back-to-back -back every two months. That's another six six fights. Actually, that's in my contract. You know what I mean? I get six fights, and say I get those, and now it's even more reason for me to get those because Matchroom is trying to build themselves back up. Now, I do these six fights. I'm destroying people. You know, I'm great performance on great performance on great performance. You see improvement every performance to where they have to give me a tougher performance or else it's stumping my growth right mm -hmm. and then next thing you know i'm in a realm where i can fight for a, a, a little usba or i can fight for some little small little title that is gonna give me the key to these world championships i i honestly believe about by this time next year you'll see me like not this ammo anymore but like true contender where some people are saying like no nah, he's too early in the game to be a contender and other people are like watch him fight and you'll see why he's a contender and it'll be that debate you know what i'm saying it will be that debate but i say by this time next year i'll be the fighter getting those shots i'll be the fighter that that's that's presented these opportunities as long as i stay focused you know what i mean and I will, you know, I definitely will stay focused. But that's my prediction. As we've seen, as we've been proven, we don't know what's going to go on in the world. COVID-19, I think, showed us all. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. But as, as to the, the, the greatest ability is that I can project something happening, I think that's how it's going to play out for myself. I mean, you're in the middle of the division, 160 pounds. It's, it's, it's not an easy division, Amo. You've picked a tough no. one. Golovkin, Andrade, uh, Charlo, uh, Al, uh, Canelo. Bloody, you've got guys in this side of the pond, Luke Keeler. You've got Liam Williams, Liam Smith. I mean, it's not an easy division for you to win that world. No. Pick, you know, and, and that's, that, that's what makes boxing so exhilarating for me. I'm like, I'm so thankful. You can't control your size. We all get born whatever size we're going to be. You know what I'm saying? Unless you just overeat like crazy and become a beast or something. <laughs> Drew, calm it down, man. No, <laughs> but anyways, no. Um, you can't control what size you're going to be. So for me to be, you know, this size to where I'm fighting in a, in a 
pinnacle division because you know heavyweight is the world's division i believe like everybody can it's the biggest guy you know what i mean everybody can can relate like that's the big one but then when you really know boxing you know that middleweight is the pinnacle because you get the power of heavyweights and you get the speed of the little guys you know what i'm saying and you get it together and it it's not like you get these heavyweights who are super slow but very powerful and they, they're all the way on this side of the spectrum and then you get the small small guys who are very fast but you're not gonna really see knockouts and things like that you'll see them few and far in between because they just they don't have that punching power and then you get middleweight where these two things meet in the middle and the majority of people are going to be there too because it's like the average human size you know what i'm saying so the majority of people going to be here you know heavyweight it's hard to have competitive heavyweight fights because it's not many it's not many heavyweights you know what i mean when you really see the like look at the history of the heavyweight division you know what i mean it's a hub of greats you know what i mean because four five six of them at a time yeah rather than a four or five or six of them at a time and they have to maneuver through those that crop of people to get to the top so it's not as crucial as a middleweight because you got everybody at middleweight. If you're the best, if you're the top guy at middleweight, then you're in the class that the majority of people are at. You had the class where you, you the most different types of body types are. You had the class where, the, you know, it's just middleweight is like a pinnacle weight. You know what I mean? For a warrior, it's the pinnacle weight. Because I'm going to get the most battles. It's never going to be hard for me to find another battle. It's always going to be somebody out there all the time. Um, and with that being said, that is a blessing for my story. That's a blessing for, you know, for what I want to do overall. Saying, like, I had the the toughest division. And I, and I did these amazing things in it. So having Charlo, having Golovkin, having all of those people, you know, to look forward to is extremely exhilarating for me. That's exactly what I want out of the story of boxing. I'm in a perfect place as a boxer. I'm in a perfect division as a boxer. And I have the abundance that I need to accomplish as much as I want to. You know what I mean? If it was only three or four people, I could only have true accomplishments maybe once or twice every three years because I got to go through nobodies to get back to somebody. But boxing, I'm going to go – have to fight somebody 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 a better person a better person every time because it's always somebody you know what i'm saying yeah. so that that makes me very happy when i think about that and i'm like dang it's gonna really be a ride for me you know it's gonna be a challenge for real for real definitely i totally agree with you you mentioned there about the heavyweights having power what's your thoughts on tyson fury though everyone says that he doesn't move quite like a heavyweight he moves like a middleweight, but he's a heavyweight. You, I've heard loads of people say that. What's your thoughts on that? That's amazing. That's an amazing example. Listen to what they said about somebody that they're trying to blow up as probably one of the best heavyweights ever. One of his attributes of why, of why he's one of the best heavyweights ever is because he moves like a middleweight. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He, he has that balance of a middleweight, and that's what makes him one of the best heavyweights to ever fight because, because of what he's being compared to. You know what I'm saying? So that in itself just validates even more what I'm saying about that middleweight division because that's the balance. That's the, like, the leveled-off division it is. You know what I mean? So for him to be able to move like that as a heavyweight is – outstanding but he's still going against other heavyweights who are only power who are mainly kind of staccato and can't move that great he's the middleweight operating amongst people who can't do that you know what i'm saying so let's say everybody in his weight class could move like that where is tyson fury is he still the greatest fighter? Is it still? Uh, is he still making people look bad? If there's some people who have his same makeup, you know what I'm saying? But me, 
everybody I fight is going to have have these attributes or some sense are kind of close to it. So I got to maneuver through people who I have to think. You know what I mean? I, it's not just a physical advantage that I have over people. I have to think. I have to really come up with a genius plan to beat mm -hmm. everybody and in their own way. You know every fight is different. I can't take what I learned from last fight and completely apply it to the next fight. I got to be able to improvise and be able to, you know, read up on it, study up on it, find out his combinations, find out his rhythm, see what he likes, what mistakes does he make. All of that I got to figure out in a four-round fight or a six-round fight right now. You know what I mean? So um, it's, it's, it's awesome to me to be in that division. And like I said, nobody could change my mind on that. You gave me an even bigger example where they say that Tyson Fury moves like a heavy, like a like a middleweight. It's a reason they say that. It's a reason they say that. You know what I mean? Definitely. So, yeah. I'm glad I gave you that little example there. But did you watch Wilder Fury two? And what was your thoughts on that fight then? You know what? I watched Wilder Fury one. I didn't get around to watching Wilder Fury two. I I never. I don't know why. I'm being honest. I have no clue why I I didn't go. I think I was so at the time. I think I was in camp. I think I was just like focused on on my my task at hand, and I never got around to it. But I gotta watch it to speak on it. You know what I mean? I have to watch it in order to speak on it. I'm sorry, Andrew. No, it's, it's all right. Know. No problem, man. I just thought the thought with the heavyweight division is, you know, it's like you said there. The heavyweight division is the sort of People yes. in boxing, do you know what I mean? When the heavyweight division's booming, boxing is booming. It seems like now that the it's booming again. Boxing is Yeah, booming. yeah. We need it. That's what I'm saying. To the world, I don't discredit heavyweights at all. Mm -hmm. I need the heavyweights. But once they draw the people in, then people can go down and they can see like what what's real, where the pinnacle really is. And uh that's why you get people like Julian Jackson and stuff like that, like these crazy hunters that have the power of a heavyweight, literally, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They are big enough to possess the power of a heavyweight, but they're small enough to possess the speed of these small, of the small guys. It just doesn't get any more exciting than that. I, I, I just think that it, to me, everybody has their own opinion, but to me, I just feel like when we go thinking about the art of war, the art of war, I think it doesn't get, um, any more exciting than that to me. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So, I want to get your opinion then because obviously you talk a lot of enthusiasm about boxing. Now here in the UK, again, I'm being selfish when I ask this question, there's a lot of talk about Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Um, and it looks like they're going to try and maneuver that fight for Saudi Arabia in December. You might be on the undercard. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but what, you know I'm bitter. Exactly, exactly. What are your thoughts on that fight? How do you break down that fight, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua? Because you did mention about the heavyweights being more straight, like upright like this, and Tyson Fury moves like a middleweight, so I just want to get your thoughts. <laughs> For the sake of my career, Andrew. Go for it. <laughs> we and you got to have this conversation on the phone together later on. Oh. I, if I tell you what I, what I really feel, it'll, it'll probably backfire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, so Andrew, I gotta save that for a oh. personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta save that one for a me and you conversation, cause you know that 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 one. I I got some stuff to say about that. I've thought about that one. Give me a call after I tell you everything. One hundred percent, brother. One hundred percent. Amo, I know you've had nothing but interviews all day. This is you've been like talking on the phone for the last. I don't know. You said you you've done a long interview with Ring. You probably did almost two hours, man. Uh, you've got Ziggy Prince there, man. No, Prince Ziggy, sorry. There's the main man himself. Oh, he's big, man. He's big. He's a huge guy, man. This yeah, is my man. guy, man. He, he's an awesome, awesome pup. Awesome yeah. pup. One final thing before I let you go, because again, thank you so much for doing this. And I know you didn't have to, and, but again, I really appreciate your time. But have you got any a message for your fans here in the, in, in the UK and stateside and... Uh, just about everything that's going on, have you got a message for everybody? Um, since we talked about it in this uh, interview and people would be able to get my true feelings upon it, 
just if you want to take what I'm telling you about being yourself, you know what I'm saying? Seriously, like go back and look at that post one more time, laugh, chuckle, get it out, but really take the ens- essence of what I was trying to give to y'all. You know what I'm saying? And all that is, is like truly be, be you, be yourself. No matter what the monetary benefits or whatever it is, doesn't matter. If, if, it, make, if it make you happy, do it. And, and you will be rich. You know what I'm saying? You will be rich. You know what I mean? So that's my um, message to everybody right now. I really hope that people grasp it and take it and uh, just live life a little bit more free and, uh, and a little bit more in tune with themselves rather than just trying to follow guidelines and, and get through. You know what I mean? So that that's it. Right now, that's my truth. You know, that's what I got to offer to everybody at my age right now. My Oh, you've gone just at that bit, Amo. You still there? That's what I got to offer to everybody. So that's what I would like to tell my fans before I go. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm still here. I'm still hey, here. What? What? Can you just repeat the last ten seconds? There, you just sort of froze for a second. Just what you said. Oh, I was just saying. Um, what was it? Oh, just take just take the message that I said about like my Instagram posts and things like that. That's what I was saying. What's, uh, What's your Instagram? What's, what's your Instagram? Give everybody your Instagram so they can. Ammo Williams. Ammo Williams. Look at the post where you see me hitting a UFC gym bag with some basketball shoes on, and I look like a different person. And just read the caption and be yourself, man. That's that's the base of what I'm saying is be yourself, be you, and be confident in yourself, and everything will pan out for you. That's my message, sir. Right? Well, Amo, that's probably the perfect way to end this interview. Again, I appreciate your time. Always love speaking to you. I became your friend since uh, the first time I met you out in yeah. Dallas back in July last year. So thanks for being yeah. Michael TV champ. And uh, hopefully we'll see each other soon. You've got the gloves laced up uh, and get back to winning ways, man. We'll keep winning even. Thanks very much, champ. Thank you, champ. I appreciate it. Anytime, brother. Thank you. All right.